Hey YouTubers, welcome to another video on my 75 gallon saltwater reef tank. Uh, this video I'm going to mainly caption uh, the ammonia stage on the cycling of the reef tank. Uh, there are primary, uh, primarily there's uh, about three cycles. You got the ammonia, nitrite, and you got the nitrate levels. And then after that, uh, quote unquote, your tank is uh, suppo supposedly uh, supposed to be done. So, um, pretty much, uh, there are many controversies on uh, saltwater reef tanks and how you can actually cycle the whole tank. Um, there's many questions on cycling a new system. Uh, they're pretty much followed by how you can fix the trends. Um, issues pretty much on algae outbreaks, uh, the phosphate levels, not being able to rid the tank of nitrites, uh, pH going crazy, ammonia spikes, etc. There's so many little trends on the online where you can read up on this. Um, it becomes somewhat of a pet peeve to see uh, some people they say how to say uh, what do you, what do you, uh, the micro management um, in my opinion it's more information to know what's going on why your system is doing this and that how that relates to the big picture um, so going forward with all this um, there's uh, stage one which is growing the aer uh, aerobic bacteria so what happens is the water preps um, is just keeping the temperature, pH, and salinity right. That's what you want to control in the first stages of your cycling the system. Uh, there's no need to skim or use any type of lights. Uh, this I'm just using the lights on focusing on uh, the three different stages. I'll use red for the first stage, uh, green, whatnot, and blue. And uh, anyways, the lighting is just to show you guys the, the different stages that's going on. Um, but the thing is, main thing is, uh, you don't want to hook up your skimmer or your lights on the first stage. Uh, it's best not to hook up none of them. Uh, the base rock is fine to use. Uh, probably much easier, less tissue, less issues with that uh, than uncured or cured rock. That really is not so cured. Most uh, local fish stores, uh, that's, that's what they're going to sell you on this. Um, choosing rock is another trend. Um, just want to note that the die-off of the pollutants that come off the live rock in these cases uh, use the skimmer right away adding carbon or refugium going with macros and lots of water changes to be needed uh, that is again with live rock with a lot of die off that's going to be already on the system uh, the first thing is uh, you want to provide a nice surface area um, this is a place where bacteria to attach and grow uh, technically spreading throughout the tank the outer layers of the live rock and the upper layers of the sand bed which is pretty much depending on what type of sand bed you're going to go with. Some people like to go with a really deep sand bed that's uh, more than two inches. Um, that that that's, uh, live phase is pretty much uh, they're talking about the top inch, top two inches of your uh, live sand bed. Um, those are the main uh, substrates for for the surface. Uh, growth of the bacteria. The second is you want to provide a lot of oxygen in the tank. Uh, that's by leaving the top of the tank open. As you can see in my top tank, there's nothing there. And I'll show you a quick little picture of my sump with the light on. I have a cap on there for now. Uh, that's just to take away some of the bubbles that are spreading. I, I gotta make something decent. But the main thing is your top tank, you want to leave it open for a lot of aeration. Now oxygen is very critical in this stage. You want to make sure you have sufficient amount of oxygen entering and um, even maybe causing micro bubbles slightly to a certain percentage from your system would be nice to have. Um, the oxygen is pretty much for energy. The oxygen provided by the water, it's, um, it's currents and the air currents via gas exchange that happens at the surface. Uh, this limits to what you can, uh, what's in the atmosphere and the percentage of the water surface coming in contact with air. That's even uh, a small sump increase. Uh, it, per it, it, it increases a, a large amount when you have a sump <coughs> and you have an open aeration at the top tank and the bottom tank. Uh, this is again goes with a lot of good flow in the tank. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much the oxygen level. Um, the third that I want to cover is um, <clears throat> you want to provide food. You want to provide some type of dead um, or or, de or just dead or uh, dead shrimp, uh, dead stuff that's on your rock. 
Maybe you might want to feed it some flakes that I've read online. Some people like to feed a little bit of flakes because you need some type of decaying matter in the tank for the bacteria to live off. And this is more specific in the, <clears throat> the nitrogen. Uh, that, that, that happens for the de decomposing explained in the, um, in the, in the tank system. Um, <clears throat> sorry guys, I'm just kind of losing my throat today. Um, what uh, a couple other things I was going to talk to you about was uh, pretty much d what I wanted to cover is also uh, don't think about supporting fish at this time also. This is a big no-no because uh, the high amounts of ammonia in the tank are pretty much poisonous. It's like you going in a place or area with little to no oxygen and a lot of pollutant. Um, so again, it's like me sticking you in a garbage dump and breathing all the pollutant that are coming off the garbage dump. Uh, you don't want to put fishes or any type of creatures in the tank at this point. It's a big no-no. Some people, and I've known, I actually know a few local live stores, <clears throat> uh, local fish stores that would actually recommend putting damsels in the tank because they are quote-unquote hardy fish. Well, that doesn't mean, guys, you should start putting in live creatures in your tank because that's just pure cruelty uh, that's just a big no-no I would never ever recommend that to nobody and, and <clears throat> I don't expect any of you guys to do it at all so the thing is uh, what you need to provide is best conditions uh, for the growth of certain bacteria in my system once again I have a shrimp a dead shrimp that's located in this little box in the corner and here let me show you uh, too much water ripples, but here, there's a shrimp in there. Uh, my system right now has been running for approximately three days with the shrimp inside of it. Two to three days. So let's just put it at three days. And I have this water flow right at the top here that's going into the bucket. And there's a whole bunch of holes plugged inside. And that allows the bacteria to consume it, but also spread throughout the tank and the sump. That's uh, that's the main thing at this. So you want to focus on prep work. Um, the goal here right now is to grow bacteria and that's it. Nothing else. Um, some people, like I said, they use fish. And you know what? Most likely it's going to kill it. It may be actual overload for the growth bacteria, making it even longer to balance things. Remember, we only want to encourage certain types of bacteria to grow here. Those that convert ammonia. That's the key. So you want to convert the ammonia. So the use of a dead shrimp is often used, which works fine. In my opinion, though, it is the best to, uh, to use a few pieces of fresh raw live rock and lots of base rock for this. And that's what you guys see here. Um, everything else is dry rock. And you see one base rock here. Um, this one here and that one on the top. The uh, reason why I, this was in my sump, I actually put that at the top right now. Reason why is because uh, last night I was uh, putting a flashlight into my sump and I seen a lot of coca copepods and uh, a lot of creatures roaming around on my sand in the sump. So in that sense I took it onto the top tank so hoping to have these creatures and critters inside my main tank and they can cover as much as area as possible and the more they can decay and, and populate in my main tank the better for now. Because this way, it's, uh, the cycle is not just starting from the sump, it's starting from the main tank also. Uh, whatever, whatever you use, the things, bacteria, and how to fit in the long-term goal, um, you're pretty much balancing the ecosystem out. So always, dead matter, shrimp, and you want to leave it in there. Some people take it out after the ammonia spike is done. Uh, that's incorrect. Because you have your nitrates, nitrites and the nitrate levels... That again, they're bacteria, and you want these bacteria to still keep consuming that shrimp in there. Because as soon as you pull the shrimp out, guess what happens now? You're going to get a drop in your ammonia, and when the nitrite and nitrate come in, they're obviously looking to repair these chemical imbalances that are happening in the tank. And if there's no dead matter in there to repair that, and to consume it even greater, then what happens now is that, you're technically, to a minimal characteristic, you're restarting the system when you add livestock in there. So that's a big no-no. 
So after all this, um, all you want to do is you sit back and you test all the NH3s and NH2s and make sure they're at the zero. That's your ammonia. Um, and when you start seeing NO3, which is nitrites, uh, start... Uh, is it nitrites or nitrate? Uh, sorry guys, I'm kind of... It's, it's a second phaser, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not sitting in front of a computer right now just to, to have the proper stats. But uh, you, you want to get your... I know it's the NO3s. Um, you want to make sure they're steadily rising right after that. Um, all this can take anywhere from a week to a couple of months. It all depends on the environment you're providing for your tank. Um, all of your live rock was fresh and raw. will take some time. Um, up to many months with heavy skimming and heavy flow. Good air circulation. And many water changes along the way. Um, that's pretty much the water changes uh, from what I read are pretty much... You don't want to overgrowth of your cyano, the sulfur pockets, and also non, uh, non, uh, the algae, the green hair algae. You want to keep all those things away as much as possible. Um, there's Again, once I said, if there's not enough food that was provided, you end up getting a spike every single time you add the smallest little creature. Um, at this stage, once the stage is complete, then it's pretty much going ahead and you want to start calculating all your nit uh, your nitrites once again. So this is uh, th there's one experience I want to give you guys is on my friend's 125 or 150 gallon tank. If you again, it's on it's on my YouTube page in the beginning. He has a couple trigger fishes in there, and this is what happened. We cycled the tank for about a month um, with a dead shrimp. But the thing is, after we took the shrimp out after the ammonia stage, we seen a phase of algae come in and kind of go. But the thing is, when we started adding fishes, the ammonia spiked up again, and we had butterfly fishes die on us. Um, we had fish with terrible ick, um, a lot of diseases on the fishes, like started reappearing out of nowhere. This was because. We didn't let the tank cycle 110%. Um, again, anywhere you guys go, uh, you will hear about this. So please guys, keep the shrimp in there or, or if you're not going to feed the shrimp and you have live rock in there, it's easier if you have the live rock because that decaying matter, the bacteria are going to eat off it no matter what and you'll go through your phases up and down but for all you guys that are using dry rock and you guys are using shrimp, to feed the system and cycle it or adding flakes to it keep it in there please by all means necessary do not remove it you want to remove it maybe a week after you think all your levels are down to zero so um, as for this is this video here this is covering the stage one of your tank cycle and this is pretty much growing the beneficial bacteria in your system. That's what we want to cover most. Um, I will cover stage two, which is the drop in the ammonia and increase in your nitrite. So I will give you guys another video on that. Again, we're on day three on my system. I haven't had any diatom blooms or any diatoms or any type of... Uh, uh, browning on the rocks or anything on my tank yet. It's, it has been day three. Some people I've known online who had uh, s these symptoms uh, even earlier. So I just want to show you guys there's nothing growing on the, the sand here. Zero. So I don't know how long it's going to take but uh, if I do see a spike, uh, sorry not a spike, if I do start seeing um, the bacteria for uh, the ammonia stage come in. I will make a video too on the first stage, the ammonia stage. So hope you guys do like the video. Once again, um, if there's any comments or questions, please uh, feel free down below. And uh, pretty much the question of the day here is can you speed up the nitrogen uh, sorry, the ammonia cycle, and how? Um, I want to hear a couple responses to see what you guys have experienced or know of um, to help out some of the guys on in the reef industry or the, the reef hobbyists who are starting up their cycle or maybe adding additional tank to their household. So, <coughs> excuse me guys, sorry. So again, the question is, 
Can you speed up the ammonia cycle? And if yes, how? And if no, what? Why do you guys say it's no? And uh, why do you guys say it's you can't speed it up, or how you can speed it up? Um, if there is any benefits, um, the pros and cons against it. So I'd like to hear a couple of your trends and uh, see what you guys have to say about this. Um, this way, I can learn. Um, you can refresh your memory on this because I know after a little bit, everybody tends to forget how to cycle a tank and um, they rush into it. Patience is the key here, guys. So please, I'd love to hear your comments. Um, once again, feel free to subscribe. There'll be millions of videos that are coming out from me uh, and on a weekly or a couple of days or bi-weekly. We'll, we'll, we'll figure something out. But uh, thank you very much for viewing the video. Uh, have a great day. This is from Primal Reef. If you guys uh, uh, feel free to spread the word to more of your friends, um, more subscribers I get. Uh, you guys will learn a lot of techniques on how to do it yourself videos. Um, I will be making a do it yourself protein skimmer very soon for my system and even a bio pellet reactor. Uh, I'm going to make a different, I've already made a bio pellet reactor, but I'll be making a different one for my system here. So. Feel free, subscribe, and thank you very much, guys, and have a great day today.